it is my opinion that Darrell Brooks is a narcissist. I think anyone that watched the trial um, can see that. I think it's fairly obvious, but not everybody is familiar with what that means um, and the behaviors of narcissists. For those of you unfamiliar with Darrell Brooks, he is the man uh, that was just uh, recently convicted of the Waukesha Christmas parade attack that occurred on November 21st of last year. Um, Brooks murdered six people and he injured 61 others. He was charged with 77 counts and he was found guilty of all charges uh, just yesterday. Um, his sentencing should be next week, but he delivered his closing arguments and that is something that I wanted to do a video on. Now, I've been covering this trial um, in real time. I, I had been live streaming it, so I hadn't had the time to really do uh, an in-depth analysis of this. But I wanted to do the closing arguments because it was just so ludicrous to watch. Um, and I can imagine for the families of the victims, it was especially insulting. Um, for those of you don't, that don't know what gaslighting is, the term gaslighting comes from an old movie. I don't remember the name of the movie, but um, in the movie, there is a, a, a man and his wife, and um, he there are these little gaslights, and he keeps turning up the lights or turning them down. And she comes to him and asks him about it, and he says, what are you talking about? You know, like, that's not happening. Um and so what gaslighting is, is a covert, aggressive way of trying to distort another person's perception of reality to the point that person questions their own sanity or their memory, their ability to recall events. Um, that's what it is. The whole purpose of it is to make the other person doubt what they think happened or what they remember happening. So a gaslighter, you know, if you confront a, a gaslighter or a narcissist and say, hey, you know, it really upset me when you did this last week. And they'll say, I didn't do that. What are you talking about? You're starting to lose it. I think you need to get some help. You know, maybe you need to talk to somebody. That is the kind of thing a gaslighter does. Uh, so I want to just play the closing arguments here, and I'm going to give some commentary on this. Uh, so I just want to, um, you know, prepare everybody. This is going to be a longer video. His closing statement, he got an hour long, and he uh, went for almost the entire hour here. So with my commentary, this is probably going to be a fairly long video, but I really, really wanted to... Uh, talk about this and really kind of break it down because I thought it was just absolutely insane. To address that. For the record, may I move to stay these proceedings until this instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction, which this court has no right. subject matter jurisdiction. Denied. Under, uh, based on what law or fact? For the jury, please. Based on what law or fact? Because I'm going to inform the jury of their power. They deserve to know. So right off the bat, um, for people who don't know what he's talking about here, when he throws out phrases like subject matter jurisdiction and jury nullification, uh, jury nullific uh, nullification is a real thing. That is true. I mean, a, the, a jury does have the right to nullify a law if they believe that the law is wrong. However, he is accused of homicide. It's not like a jury is going to nullify that law. Um, so that's just absurd. But this the subject matter jurisdiction thing, he, he's been playing this game the entire time. You can go back and watch it yourself. It's the sovereign citizen stuff. Um, you can, you know, look that up on your own. But what he's basically doing is claiming that he doesn't have to follow the law because he is a special boy. Mm -hmm. 
and it is a form of gaslighting in and of itself, trying to make people question the validity of the court to even hear this case. Oh, do they even have proper standing? Is this the right venue? Do they have subject matter jurisdiction? It, it's just the hey, constant attempt to be in control that all narcissists have. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks, your closing argument, please. So he had just got done arguing with the judge for um, five to ten minutes prior to the jury being brought in where she's trying to tell him these are the rules Th this is how what you have to follow you are not allowed to say this you're not allowed to bring that up and he argued and argued and argued until he got his way good afternoon it's, it's been a long day First off, I'd just like to start by uh, letting you guys know that uh, it's a lot of information that you guys should be privy to, I believe. So right off the bat, he's making the jury think, oh, we're not getting the full picture. Maybe that we're not, we don't know everything or things have been hidden from us. That And, and she had just told him, you're not allowed to bring up nullification or whatever. And of course, so what does he do? It's going to be the first, pretty much the first thing he brings up. But it's right off the bat, um, get trying to have the jury question reality. Maybe there's a conspiracy here. Maybe we're not getting the full picture. Maybe things are being hidden from us. That's what he is trying to convey to them. One thing that I believe that you have not been privy to is the truth of your rights and your duties being the jury. Oh, so one thing you're not being privy to, I believe, is your rights and duties. So not only is he saying, oh, you have these rights that they're not telling you about, that they're hiding from you and keeping from you, but you also have a duty so ha look at how he's setting this up in his presentation to the jury. Oh, you have a duty to find me, you know, not guilty. Um, the fact that you and you alone have the power. Not um, well-prepared DAs with well-prepared and clearly rehearsed um, speeches. and. Okay. Um... All prosecutors and district attorneys are going to rehearse and prepare a closing statement or an argument. That's literally how this works. But he is making it sound like it's nefarious as he describes this to the jury. You alone have the power. He's saying you, not only do you have the power, but what he's implying is if you don't find me not guilty then you didn't use the power you had, or maybe you're not powerful. It is very, very interesting. And the exhibits and a lot of theatrics. And, you know, that's also funny because, again, with the gaslighting, he's trying to get the jury to question their own memory, their ability to recall events of the past 17 days that this trial had been going on. The only people performing theatrics throughout this entire thing is Mr. Brooks himself. So it's projection. It's accusations, false accusations, moving the goalposts, uh, lack of accountability. Frankly, not the judge. You and you alone have the power. You and you alone decide what is truth and what isn't truth. You decide what's truth and what isn't truth. You have the power to decide a different version of reality. You can decide that even though I'm guilty, you can change reality and change the truth and actually make me innocent. You have the power to do that. 
you should be informed that you have the power to nullify any law that you don't agree with. As if anyone would nullify the law against murder. Like, really? But look at how he's presenting this to them. Oh, you've got this, this power they don't want you to use. Objection. Move to strike his statement. Sustained. Objection. I will strike from the record the last statement made by the defendant. The jury which will is, disregard it. Which is clearly what I've been saying. I believe that not only is it fair, but it's essential that you be privy to all knowledge, not knowledge that certain people feel that you should hear and shouldn't hear, disguised under the color of law. Um, the fact that the matter is, just like I did with uh, my opening uh, statements, I don't have a well-prepared or rehearsed speech. Um, I didn't look in the mirror and say certain points to myself over and over again to make sure I have them right. Or... So look at what he's implying. What is the implication of what he's saying? Oh, I'm just here speaking from my heart. I didn't prepare anything. I didn't look in the mirror and, li and rehearse lies. That's the implication. What he's saying is that the prosecutors have been lying this whole time. And we know that's not true just based on the evidence itself, which is voluminous and overwhelming. Or anything like that, I've chosen to speak from the heart. In my opening statements, in... Now, I'm going to speak from the heart. Now, obviously, this is untrue, but that's how he's presenting it, is he's the one being truthful and honest, and everybody else has just been lying to you this whole time. But I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to be the one that tells you the truth. I'm going to be the one that tells you about this uh, secret power that you have that they don't want you to use, and they're hiding things from you, and I think you have the right to see everything and to know everything before you make a decision. That is the gaslighting. And it is absolutely ridiculous. And watch how he continues to present himself not only as being the victim, but as an anti-hero, right? As the guy that's actually the only person in the room trying to do the right thing. The guy that is here, and, it, and he just happens to be here because of an inconvenience to everybody. And, you know, like, it's just, it's amazing to watch. What you won't hear me do is argue facts. And that is, I find it interesting that he makes that admission. Now, of course, he's going to try to gaslight about it, but he admits like that the facts aren't on his side. So what he's going to do instead is to attempt to emotionally manipulate people, to project, to move the goalpost, to claim he's actually the victim. You know, it's, yeah, well, let's just watch. And the reason you won't hear me argue facts is because I believe that it takes away from what should be recognized. So, <laughs> would you look at that? The truth, the actual facts of the matter take away from what I think should be recognized, which is my feelings which is my self-interest, which is me, me, me. Um, you know, and the reason that they do this, the reason that narcissists gaslight is that they want you to doubt yourself, to deny your emotions in your reality and to adopt their version of events. Now, they have to gaslight to protect their egos because they have actually very fragile um, 
sense of self-worth and identity. So the truth is a threat to their false image of themselves and their reality. They have to construct a new reality that will allow them to maintain a false sense of power and control. The tragedy of this event. Oh, it was just a tragic event. This is the man um, who deliberately, intentionally slaughtered people, maimed people for life. And the jury has seen all of the evidence this entire time. They've seen overwhelming evidence that he did this, and he knows that. So rather than to try to say that, you know, I'm innocent and here's why, like what a normal person defending themselves that they were actually innocent would do, what he's going to do is to try to get them to just have little doubts about what they actually saw during this trial. Did you really, you don't believe your eyes, I'm actually the victim. That's what he's saying. It should be recognized. <clears throat> Trying to argue facts of this, facts of that. I'm not going to waste your time doing that. Oh, it's a waste of time to argue the actual facts of the matter. To talk about the actual reality and truth of what happened is just a waste of time. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to gaslight you. I'm going to project. I'm going to try to get you to question your own sanity. It's a little emotional. I apologize for the long pause. Oh, he's emotional. And here we go. This is the manipulation. It What it is about is um, really uh, emotional confusion. He's using this fake um, emotive body language and pretending to feel empathy to try to confuse people. And that he has been in exhaust people. He's been doing it the entire time. He's emotional. It's hard to keep everything together emotionally. Uh, and honestly, I don't believe that I have any more tears left. Uh, it's, it's been a hard year. It's been a hard year. Here we go with he's the victim. You know, it's in me, 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 me. Here's why, you know, I'm the victim. For the families, mostly. Mostly. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, we're all just uh, victims of a tragic circumstance. And that should not be lost on anyone it, it shouldn't be taken away um, I said it before and I'll say it again it's a lot of people that are are healing that are attempting to heal no you don't heal after you've lost a child at eight years old an eight-year-old child you don't heal when you've lost a spouse a brother a sister a loved one a parent you don't heal you can try to heal, you can heal in some ways, but you'll never fully recover from that. So that is just, and he's the one, remember, that is responsible for this. But throughout this entire thing, you'll see that he never, ever takes responsibility or accountability. He, you know, maintains this idea that he's a victim, that everything is a conspiracy. And not only was he a victim, but actually... You know, who are we to question God's plan? It was actually the SUV that did it. And in fact, I tried to warn people, I'm actually the victim. Actually, I was trying to save people. And actually, at the end of the day, it was a rescue mission. 
I was trying to rescue people. My family has been affected. My children. Me, me, me. That is what he's going to argue. That opens the door to talk about uh, forgiveness for a little bit. Um, with every healing process, there comes a, a forgiving process. Um, it's not an easy thing for anyone. which you've been hearing from the prosecution and not to take any way away, uh, anything away from them but let's call it what it is you've been hearing a lot of rerun wow now he's saying that oh uh, they're actually trying to brainwash you or something with the repetition it's just unreal guys <laughs> Same things over and over and over. No different than when you turn on the radio and you first hear that song that you don't like when you first hear it. But they yeah, play it so much that eventually you start saying it, the words to yourself before you even realize it. There's the gaslighting. Oh, they, the, it's the prosecutors that have actually manipulated you and maybe you can't be sure of everything you've just seen the past 17 days. Are you really sure what happened happened or did they manipulate you? Have you been brainwashed through repetition? Kind of like a song on a radio. Oh, you're just, it automatically comes into your head because they did this to you because they used a manipulation tactic on you called repetition. That is what he is suggesting. And then you sit and you go, I hate that song. Why am I singing? And look at what he compares this to. And then you're sitting there going, I hate that song. Why am I singing it? He is trying to compare a jury seeing all of the evidence of his crime which was homicide and injuring over 60 people, listening to witnesses get on the stand and tell their story about what happened to their children or their loved one or what they had to witness happen to, you know, friends or uh, community members at a parade that was supposed to be a, a Christmas celebration, a family event. He's now saying, oh, it's just like you start singing a song that gets stuck in your head and, and you don't even like the song or know why you're singing it. Wow. He wants the jury to associate the trial with getting a song stuck in your head that you don't like. Oh, actually, the jury is a victim and the judge is too. And the jury should be commended. Because they've been inconvenienced by all of this. That's where he goes with this. That's what's been happening. Rerun. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Attempting to make things stick in your head that simply aren't true. But remember, guys, he said he wasn't going to argue the facts. He doesn't say what specifically the prosecution lied about because he knows that they're not lying, that they're telling the truth and presenting evidence that we've all all can see with our own eyes. Eyewitness testimony, firsthand testimony from others. None of that was a lie that he can refute. So instead, what he's doing is making them question their reality. Are you really sure you saw what you saw? Why do I say what am I saying? I say look at the testimony. You know, the, the, the thing from the prosecution here has been intent, 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 intent. We all know what's been said 
we all know the picture that's been painted. Even the prosecution said themselves. How can you look at somebody said and say, this is what they intended to do? Well, I think the evidence is makes it obvious. I mean, he accelerated and he did this for four blocks. Not once did he get out of the vehicle and try to help anybody. You know, for, for a year I've I've sat and gone through this. Feeling so powerless. You know, letting other people run with the narratives. <laughs> Sitting back helpless while other people paint a picture that. Oh, he's the victim. He's just sitting here helpless. He's a helpless victim and other people are just painting this narrative about him. Um, he had the ability to have lawyers. He had public defenders and he got rid of them. He chose to represent himself. He did it for a reason because he wants to be able to claim that he is the victim, actually. Now, narcissists are not willing to entertain the feelings of other people. Their fragility means that they are threatened by other people's emotions and reality, so they have to ignore them and invalidate them. It's a constant emotional manipulation and crazy-making behavior, which is what gaslighting is. Zero. Zero truth. He just said that. Now we'll rewind it for a sec just so we can replay it, the nonsense. Sitting back helpless while other people paint a picture that has zero truth. Zero. Now he's telling them. There's zero truth to the mountains of evidence that you have seen for the past 17 days. And I've been helpless while everybody harms me and creates a false narrative about me. I understand about healing myself, tragedy, pain, all that. A lot of it, there's no need to get into. Again, he's the victim. He's the one that has had tragedy and pain and needs to heal. And that, that we don't need to talk about that stuff. I mean, it's just stunning, really. The audacity of this man. I myself in my own life have had to do a lot of healing. As a man with children myself. I'm an innocent father. I have children. Let me use my children as a cudgel. I find it hard to believe Anyone who's really had conversations with me, spent time around me, would think for one second that this is an intentional act. Oh, so now he doesn't deny that he did it, but it, it wasn't intentional because I have children too. And I'm the victim here. Just watch where this goes. I've never heard of someone intentionally trying to hurt someone while attempting to blow their horn. 
attempting to blow their horn. Oh, that's all, guys. Actually, he was trying to help. This is, he actually made this argument. The level of gaslighting. Well, uh, attempting to alert people of their presence. Which brings me to more information that I believe that you should have been privy to. And I'm sure that the prosecution will beg to differ. But the fact of the matter is, the vehicle in question, make a model of 2010 Ford Escape. The vehicle in question. The vehicle in question, it was the vehicle that did it. 2008, 2009, and 2010 of that model was in fact recall. And there we go. That is a lie, um, as far as I know. And what he's trying to do is say, actually, it was the vehicle that did it. It wasn't me. It was the SUV. And really, I tried to warn and help people. I'm the victim here. I'm actually a hero. I was trying to save people from this out-of-control vehicle. Misstatement of the facts. Facts not in evidence. Was in is fact. Is the same. Was in fact recalled. And he keeps going. Was in fact a class action lawsuit against Ford Objection for those model evidence, for Your those Honor. model vehicles. Sustain the journal disregard. Information that you should have been privy to. That you weren't allowed to be privy to. Oh, you weren't allowed. Why? I don't know. Why? I don't know. They wanted to keep this information from you. Again, question your reality, question your perceptions, question the truth, question your eyes, question all of the evidence you've seen. That information, malfunctioning throttle bodies. Mr. Brooks, move on. It's the information that you should have been privy to. Vehicles that malfunction and accelerate not being able to be stopped. Objection, that is key. It's information, it's, it's information. Oh, the vehicle just wasn't able to be stopped. It had a mind of its own, the car. It was the SUV, not me. Hold on. Go ahead. We'll just strike statements by Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> Facts not in evidence, Your Honor. Please keep with your statement. Sustained. How is it a misstatement when I have the information? Mr. Brooks, move on. This is information that I feel like you needed to know. You should have known. Information that was taken away from you. Ta it was taken from you. You've had something taken from you. Why? To prove a case? You've been robbed. You've had something taken from you. Information that you definitely should have been privy to. DA says the defendant has an utter disregard for human life. Utter disregard for human life. Not realizing that they're talk about a, talking about someone that has, again, has children. Let me use my kids once again. And the thing of this is, is the reason the narcissist gaslight and they use all these different manipulation tactics, it's to hide their own abusive behavior, to hide that abuse. They are compulsive liars, but they lie with a purpose. And that purpose is to manipulate you and to the point where they get to remain in control and can control your perception of them 
and of reality in general. Talking about someone that watched their children come out of the womb and be born into this world, cut the umbilical cord, held them before their mom even did. Moments that I'll never forget. It has nothing to do with this case. It's just him talking about himself and how great of a person he is. And yet they say disregard, utter disregard for human life. <laughs> they made reference to a rage. as if they were, or if this particular DA was right there, standing right there, as if this DA is a psychiatrist. I said to myself, what, rage, what do you mean rage? How can you characterize that? How can you have the audacity? They have the audacity? To diagnose what someone's brain is. It, where it's at, what it's thinking. Why it thinks the way it does. Oh, wow. DA makes references to blocks of no one <laughs> being injured, but then says it's intentional. It was obviously intentional. We've all seen the video. Add that up with the supposed rage. The supposed intent to harm and kill. And it doesn't, it doesn't kick in until well within blocks. And maybe it's just me, but I would think if I was characterizing someone with this intent to kill and, and, this, and this, this rage and this anger, then why weren't people immediately harmed? Wow. So what he's saying is you can't trust your perceptions of reality. You must rely on me, the narcissist. You must defer to me for an account of what is real. Why would someone with intent to kill and rage try to alert people of their presence, repeatedly honk their horn? You, you heard a detective, if you recall, testify that The vehicle that he observed was not only honking his horn, but was not speeding. So where does this rage kick in? Where does this insatiable <coughs> intent to kill kick in? They speak as someone who's known someone for years. Which brings me back to the vehicle. What if the vehicle couldn't stop because of the malfunction? Objection. Oh, what if the vehicle was a victim too? Wow. The, and by the way, you'll notice the same kind of thing. This is politicians do it, cult leaders do it, corporations use it. They all gaslight. It is the narcissist's favorite tool. In fact, not in evidence. What if, what if the driver of the vehicle was unable to stop the vehicle? Because of that fact, what if the driver may have panicked? It's 
that make the driver a craze or not crazed a, 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 a rage does that make the driver in a rage and intent on killing people DA played a exhibit 17 you don't see anyone struck in that vehicle on that exhibit you don't see anyone struck with someone who had this intent to kill this rage as as she says if that was their intent would they have taken the opportunity to hit as many people as they could you killed Target six. People, you, mowed down people. you mowed down 61 others that have horrific injuries. Reference was made to this vehicle, the damage. says this is all caused by bodies, but then later turns around and says, hits barricades and other objects. I've heard testimony about hearing loud crashes and, and, and things of that nature, but the DA wants you to believe that this all came from people. Evidence does support, support that. that. Right. The evidence doesn't well, support that. I get around everything that's happened in the last year. I'm the victim. And I just can't wrap my head around this. Praying for those families, praying for the people that the nerve. tragically lost their life. Because that should not be lost either. The nerve of this man. The fact that there was lives lost. To invoke the lives of the people that he harmed. That he is responsible for murdering and maiming. And all the emphasis has been put on the alleged defendant. The alleged defendant. That's another thing he does. And the people have been disregarded. Makes me wonder, does the DA even care about those people? There it is. There's the gaslighting. I'm the only one that even cares about these tragic victims that I killed. And it makes me wonder, you know, oh, this has been lost. He's made this entire thing about himself the entire time. He is a compulsive liar. And they, the narcissists do this to gain power and control over other people to convince you that they are right. They're the only one that is right to dismiss the reality of anyone but themselves, to minimize their own abusive behavior, to play the victim, to evade responsibility, to fabricate things that never happened like he's doing right now. There's been prayers going up every day. Been suffering on both sides. On both sides? Oh, he's the victim. He's the one that's suffering. It's been threats, hate mail. Because of the narratives that's been put out there. The misconceptions that have been put out there, the lies that have been put out there, lies that have caused my children not to be able to go to school, 
to be bullied. For my mother to have to leave her home and stay at a hotel because she's afraid for her safety. Because she gets hate mail shoved through her, her mailbox. My nieces and nephews to fear for their safety. It's all about him. No accountability. No responsibility. No self-reflection. And what's been equally hard is not only having to answer the questions from my daughter who was seven at the time, my baby, my baby girl, who was seven at the time, is now eight. My baby. Oh, I have a baby. My baby girl. Feel bad for me. Attempting to ask, answer her questions that she's asking and still continue to shield her from what she sees, what she hears. Having a newborn son that I haven't even been able to meet, I haven't been able to hold, touch, kiss. Poor me. Me, me, me. I'm the victim. You should feel bad for me. Having to navigate everything that comes with this whole situation. <sighs> While still attempting to wrap my head around it. Tragic victim of circumstance. I can't honestly say how many times I've sat in my cell. Especially during lights out, alone, where it's just you. And just been <laughs> praying and asking myself, how could this happen? How could I be held accountable for my own actions and behaviors? Not just for the people. Oh, how could this ha have happened? But for everybody involved, the community too, how could this happen? How? <laughs> Unbelievable. Everyone's actually a victim, a tragic victim of this, this the just circumstance. Ask is those that don't have an answer. What? They do have an answer, though. You did what you did, and you chose to do it. No matter how much thinking you do, no matter how much you try to look at it from different perspectives and listen to other outside perspectives and listen to people that you trust and that you love. Still coming up with nothing. Oh, we just come up. We're just coming up with nothing. You can't trust uh, any of your perceptions. And, you know, there's just no answers for this. But to think for one second, one, one, one question I never had to ask was if this was intentional. That's something that never even, I never asked once. Because I know it wasn't. As a matter of fact, it never even crossed my mind to even attempt to ask myself that because I know it wasn't. Wow. And 
I know sometimes during this trial probably doesn't show. Maybe hard to believe. But trust me when I say no one outside of the families that had to go through this, no one's heart is more in pieces than mine. Oh my God. He actually had the nerve to say that. Actually, what you what we all know happened didn't happen. Actually, I'm the victim here. And actually, it's your fault that this happened, not mine. I'm the one harmed the most. So again, I go back to all these exhibits. Go back to everything that's been shown, everything that's been testified to. Everything you've heard during this whole process, this trial. And again, I say the same thing that I said earlier. The same thing I said in opening statements. not reading from any paper, any books. Everything you've heard in opening statements, everything you're hearing now is from right here. Everything. have the decision. You and you alone, all of you, you have the decision. I'm sure you've taken a lot of notes during this process. Some days are longer than others. A lot of movement in and out of the courtroom for various reasons. For his outbursts, his temper tantrums, his meltdowns, his abusive, disruptive, defiant behavior. But again, he's gonna act like that didn't happen. Various reasons. Remember the power that you have. Don't for one second let it be taken away from you. Unreal. Don't let your power be taken. You better find me innocent. Or else you're not powerful. The nerve. I can never understand the position of sitting on a jury in, in something of this magnitude. So I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of pressure. I pray that the right decision is made. The right decision. Which, again, to him is don't hold me accountable or else you're making the wrong decision and not using your power and you're letting people take your power. Absolute insanity. And the it's goal... almost like that, um... The goal of all this, of course, is to cause confusion in the jury 
uh, brain fog, self-doubt, disorientation, paranoia, fear, feeling like you're losing your mind, feelings of guilt. He wants them to second guess everything they've seen this entire time, to doubt themselves, and instead to just listen to his version of reality, to defer to that. Your message, well, not message, but that writing, we're in our vehicles and it, you got that rear view mirror and you say things are closer than they appear. But it's also another way of saying sometimes things aren't as they appear. No, it's not. That isn't anywhere near being the same thing. What? can't speak for anyone else but me myself I believe in Jesus Christ the so nerve raised, to invoke I in. Jesus unreal none of us are perfect Oh, none of us are perfect. Sometimes, you know, we all just uh, kill six people and injure 61 I others. I every day to make sure that I acknowledge him. Right. That's this is, every time again, I step in this courtroom, the gaslighting. I have my Bible with me everywhere I go. I even read it on breaks, recesses. This is not something that started... At the beginning of this incident, this is something oh, that really? has been instilled in me since I came out of the womb. Right. Oh, he's always been a Christian, guys. Just a good Christian boy. This is how my family lives their life. This is how we was raised. Poor me. Me, me, me. For whatever mistakes that I just, myself have made in my just life, a mistake. I'm at peace with, with God. I'm at peace with God after killing a bunch of people and injuring made peace. more. I've made peace. Haven't taken responsibility or accountability, haven't repented, but I've made peace. I'm Unreal. happy to say that my conscience is clear. Wow. Because he's the real victim here. And because I believe, I trust him with my life. It's stunning. Nobody would never know why it was his will for this to happen. Oh, it was God's will for this to happen. It was actually God's fault he wanted it to happen. Actually, Jesus is responsible, guys. Not me. A lot of lives were changed that day. Wow. <laughs> Not God's way is not our own. It was just God's way. No how much sometimes we want to question. And who we are we to, faith. to question God? Unbelievable. Pure manipulation. Emotional manipulation. Trying to cause emotional confusion. It's disgusting. inside yourself look inside yourself and make the right decision Look 
inside your heart. All right, inside your heart. It's just ridiculous. You have everything in your hands now. Everything. <laughs> Do what's right. Do what's right. Don't let the smoke and mirrors take away your power. Don't let the theatrics take away your power. Don't let the theatrics take away your power. The theatrics. Again, he's telling them that oh, every one of you this has has just been theatrics. Fucking unbelievable. right make the right decision It's hard to think about my younger kids getting older and at some point having to explain everything to them. Oh, again, more about him being a victim. What about the people whose children will never grow up because kids you took their life? Forever. Nowadays, kids is frankly a lot smarter than we were when we was kids. I tell you that much. I got a letter the other day. My youngest daughter. She's still learning cursive right now, so she's the best writer when it comes to cursive. She'd rather print. She said, Dad, and this is from the letter. She said, Dad, why are people saying all these mean things about you? I haven't read the rest of that yet, letter yet. Me, me, me. You should feel bad for me. Let me tug at your heartstrings. Feel bad for my kids. Don't think about the kids the I killed. That's it, that's it. And injured. That's not the dad I know. <laughs> the 
throughout this year, I've been called a lot of things. People called me names. And to be fair, I am a lot of things. A murderer is not one of them. Says the man who murdered six people and injured 61 others. Never will be. The gaslighting guys. Moving the goalpost, projection, compulsive lies. He has no remorse. close my statements I just want to say open your hearts inside yourself when making this decision. Have no fear. Here comes more gaslighting. Pray. Pray. You know it's right. So he's going to use positive reinforcement and praise to try to emotionally manipulate and brainwash the jury to cause emotional you know confusion right. and brain fog and exhaustion. Think about everything you've heard. Think about everything you haven't been privileged to hear. Oh, there's stuff you don't know about. Maybe there's evidence you haven't seen, secret things that you don't know about that they're trying to hide from you. Which is not true, and it's absurd. Think about the whole entire picture. The long pauses where he stares them down. All part of it. Everything. His manipulation. Whatever you decide, make sure you yourself can live with it. <laughs> make sure you can live with it. Oh, I'm That's just the magnitude of the power that you have. I'm just concerned with you, and you have the power. Unreal. Just like this tissue is in my hand. This is everything. You have everything. What? More emotional confusion. Be at peace with what you decide. Think about my tears. <laughs> Had no regrets.
don't let this decision weigh on you after it's over. Why would it? We all know what you did, buddy. Hopefully we got a long, lot, lot of living ahead of us. Oh my God. So hopefully we've got a long life ahead of us, a whole lot of living ahead of us. We, he's now associating himself with the jury. Hopefully we, we, unreal guys. Lord willing. Lord willing. Oh, right. Okay. Don't look back and kick yourself in the behind. <laughs> if you find me guilty, you're going to regret it later. Spend about three weeks with you. Took a lot of courage and a lot of guts. You're courageous. To pause your life for this. More positive reinforcement. To More put praise. Things on hold. As a manipulation tactic. To, to basically stop your life. Well, you're victims you too. You should be commended. With this amount of pressure. I want you guys to know that's not lost on me. I'm sure it's a lot. Me, me, me. Me, me. And you all should be commended because it, it, it took courage to do this. I don't know, but I would bet a lot of people wouldn't want to be sitting in your position right now. And you guys had the guts to do it. You're victims, too. We're all just Thank victims. You Thank you for taking pretty much a month and setting it to the side for this. Oh, this inconvenience, this trivial matter. I know it's probably not proper, but you, you guys deserve a round of applause if you could give oh, them. Oh, they actually deserve a round of applause. Let's give him a medal, too. And let's give him one while we're at it. Because you guys, Thank you guys and Daryl are the real victims and, here, and I know, right? And I, and I have faith and I trust that. Unbelievable, guys. I'm... It's stunning. You guys know what's right. Oh, you know what's right. Ladies and gentlemen, I, just, I don't think it's fair to just say guys, but... Oh, we wouldn't want to be misgendering anybody here, okay? Unreal. I believe in your heart you know, that you know what's right. Oh, in your heart you know what's right, which is what I tell you, my version of events. Thank you. So that's the end of it, guys. Um, an absolute masterclass in gaslighting. He spent an entire hour gaslighting that jury and trying to emotionally manipulate people. You never once saw him take accountability for anything. You never once saw him really mention any kind of evidence or facts, which he said he didn't want to get in the way, right? Because, you know, they're not on his side. But let me just try to, you know, emotionally manipulate you, confuse you, exhaust you, wear you down, persistently brainwash you into believing my version of events and questioning everything you've seen. Oh, maybe you haven't seen everything. Maybe they're hiding something from you. Maybe there's just a, a conspiracy going on here and we're all the victims. Uh, that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, and uh, it, it just really sickens me because I know that the family members of the victims had to sit there and watch that. And I can't imagine what was going through their minds um, 
as they had to listen to that for an entire hour. Anyways, uh, that's it. Um, I just want to say, if you can, do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Leave a comment. Like the video if you can. Subscribe if you aren't uh, a, a member of the channel. Join our family. Um, we'd love to have you here. I try to put out content consistently, and I try to cover things in a way that I think is, you know, important or unique to myself. I know that not everybody likes my my takes. Um, sometimes I can be very harsh, and I think that that's just appropriate, though. Um, but anyways, yeah, thank you guys for listening. I know this was a long one. I didn't want to just play some clips, though. I really wanted to play the entire thing from start to finish, just so you can see how um, abusive this man is, how manipulative he is. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he he's showing that he has no remorse at all. This entire thing was about him, me, 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 how he's been inconvenienced by this, how it's affected him and his family. He has no ability to empathize with the family members of the people that he killed and to put himself in their shoes and to consider how they are feeling. He actually tried to claim that what he was feeling was just as bad as what they were feeling. You know, he has been suffering, actually. Actually, he's the victim, and everybody's out to get him because people have said mean things about him on the internet. Uh, it's just stunning. And then you can watch him go from, you know, fake crying to the next minute laughing or being angry. Like, he he just goes from emotion to emotion to emotion. Um, this is all affect. The projection and the audacity to claim that the entire court was smoke and mirrors and theatrics when that is all he has been doing this entire time. So, anyways, uh, that's my thoughts.